For more on the Chinese economy in Hong Kong, Edward Xie, chairman and CEO of Gongfeng Advisory Company in Beijing, Liu Zhiqian, senior researcher at Chongyang Institute for Financial Studies with Renmin University of China. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. We all know that China's economy is going through a transition. Now, Mr. Xie, what is the nature of this transition? How to study the statistics that are coming out these days in regard with the backdrop of this transition? I think everybody knows that the public sector is not doing very well, and in fact, it's under a lot of pressure. And it's actually also pulling down the overall Chinese economy quite a bit. What we think uh, is that China is now undergoing a transition, as you said, from a uh, properly led or properly dominant uh, uh, e economy into a digital economy, where innovation and technology will play a much bigger role. So I think this is where we are in China. Mm. How do you analyze this transition, Mr. Liu? Where are we in the early stage, in the middle of it? Uh, I think we are uh, at the very early stage. I think that because it will take us some quite a long time that to overcome all difficulties and the challenges we are facing for the transit period as well. In my opinion, because as a, when we're talking about the economic development, I have to describe this uh, period as also economic growth or also has four seasons. That means spring, summer, autumn, and the winter time. So every season has already two years, that together eight years plus two years uncertainty. I think the 10 years is a cycle uh, that the development. So we can see that at this moment, the transition period, as um, Mr. Dr. She always said that the property uh, field is a key point to say that. But in my opinion, I've changed my idea recently because everybody talking about the property problem, but the property is a victim. Everybody try to criticize, try to shift all the responsibilities to the property uh, this industry. Actually, we have another and other and more important fields and areas that uh, to be noticed. How do you explain the challenges that we're having right now in terms of economic growth? What is the challenge uh, do you see? Uh, in my opinion, that we have two challenges. One is the major policy uh, making because of, uh, all the problems and uncertainties cost partially or 50% of the problem caused by the policy we, we had before because of this uh, problem that uh, we failed to catch up in the world development. And uh, secondly is that we have uh, tried to shift our policy from left side now to the right side. And sometimes from the right side to the left side. For instance, we are not talking about the very famous uh, policy is that the unified market, the unified policy overall. But uh, as, as we know that in the past years, that the unified uh, policy, unified market for a huge country, a huge market, that means that when we implement such a policy, it's too difficult because every every province, as every local has its localization. Mm -hmm. So how to make a real good understanding? Because many local governments try to always to shift their own responsibilities. Oh, now we do, we, we cannot do nothing more because the central government has a unified market. So we have to follow the unified market policy. But what is the localization, local character? Mm. This is the strong point of uh, different okay. province has a different strong point. What can be the things to be done? What can be the things that can be done right now in order to address at least immediate uh, challenges as you see it. We, I talk about the public sector, but certainly it's not the only sector which has some problem in the Chinese economy. In, in general, uh, the consumption level in China is not as high as what it should be. Uh, and I think that reflects a bit of uh, the confidence of a lot of people, both the consu consumers as well as potentially the investors as well. Uh, and we also are, are looking at um, you know, as we think about the dual circulation, meaning external circulation as well as internal circulation of the economy, mm. 
uh, both are having some challenges. In terms of policies in the financial sector, you know, one would always resort to fiscal policy as well as the monetary policy. I believe that uh, in uh, December, in the Central Economic uh, Conference, uh, these topics were discussed very much in the Chinese leadership. I think they have agreed that uh, in, uh, in this year, uh, the Chinese government is going to try to institute more proactive fiscal policy, meaning be more, uh, yeah, more proactive and be more energetic in injecting new fiscal policy into the, the economy. Mm. And then uh, I think on on the monetary monetary policy, they were talking about more prudent monetary policy, meaning right. perhaps they're going to be a little bit more careful on the supply of mon money into the economy. Tell me more about what do you think can be the immediate immediate fix to at least the short term to the Chinese economy. At the moment, I think the problem is that all entrepreneurs. All regions, local government, waiting for the signs, for the instructions for top level, from central government. They do not have their local initiative. This is a really a big challenge. Mr. Liu is mainly focusing on the policy side. Let me go to you, Mr. Xie, on some specifics. Mm. As we mentioned in the opening of our show today, uh, in fact, recently, the number of tourism doing pretty well, if you look at the New Year's time. Uh, according to Ministry of Culture and Tourism, total of 135 million domestic trips made uh, from December the 30th to uh, January the 1st, 2024. Uh, also, that's a jump even from the year 2019. Uh, meanwhile, you also see ticket sales increase to about 1.5 billion yuan and the list that goes on. But of course, people ask the question whether these are sporadic examples or they are likely to be the trends uh, that people demonstrate to show that they have more confidence in consumption, they have more confidence in the economy. What's your take? Yeah, my take is that uh, people actually have money to spend. Uh, but the question is what, when and when, they, when they're gonna be spending the money, right? And so during these long holidays, they're willing to spend the money and they have the ability to spend the money. But then during the normal days, during the normal days, they may not have that confidence to continue to spend the type of money that they used to spend in the previous years because perhaps some of them are not having a job or uh, they may not see the future as bright as what they had before. For those kind of reasons, the people are a bit more conservative during the normal days. Mm. But during holidays, people are willing to spend a whole lot, as you said. Mm. What about this market uh, size? Is China's market still the most coveted uh, or one of the most uh, still coveted uh, by the rest of the world? Is China's market going to be, uh, whether it is unified as a whole or uh, it is uh, having different natures in different parts of this market, going to create some kinds of momentum that could drive the economy going? Of course, these are trillion dollar questions. But I still want to ask for your sense of judgment, given where you are mm -hmm. and you're traveling between Hong Kong and the mainland often. That's correct. Uh, as you know, uh, Tianwei, I work with a lot of companies and many of them are foreign companies. And I say that in general, the foreign companies interest in China continues to be pretty high, actually, because they see China yeah. as a major market. And there's a lot of reports about foreign companies leaving China or foreign companies not confident in China. Maybe there's some, but the majority of the companies, at least the ones that I know, are actually continues to be very confident about China, mostly because of the market size, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So I would testify that, uh, in fact, uh, you know, the size of the market in China is the major reason for the draw of foreign direct investment in China. Yeah. Now about the policy side and also about the implementation of the policies. And Mr. Liu, as you know, Many have this consensus here in China, at least about the potential of the economy. For example, uh, new infrastructure, new energy, new technology leading to smart manufacturing, and also new consumption, different types of new consumptions in this country. Many believe these are going to drive the economy further 
with a bigger potential if we solve the problems for the immediate term. Now, we cannot do it separately, right? We have to do, fix the economy right now while at the same time building the groundwork for the future, for the potential. To these four areas, Mr. Liu, what do you make of their, um, shall I say, the energy it could give to uh, build this economy potentially? And what kind of groundwork right now, urgently, need to be done? I think it's the confidence in the market and also the expectation for the future. Because the present market is uh, still waiting for proof that whether it could have a very good uh, revenue in the future. So uh, expectation for the uh, future is more important than anything else. Because when the people believe in the near future that we can have a, a good income, that people will try their best to do more business. Mm -hmm. Because as we know, the, the government has already uh, cut uh, in, in five or six uh, categories in different uh, uh, industries. For instance, they named in such a way. This is a very, uh, very, very good explanation. For instance, they call this uh, the modern, modernized uh, industry today, and uh, the traditional industry, and also the emerging industry, and also future industry. Even we have, and also we have different uh, categories for this industry. If we have new, for news, as you mentioned that. Together, I think all this could be combined uh, in a, a very good package, uh, packet in the basket also. We can develop simultaneously mm -hmm. and with, the, with a very quick return with quicker efficiency in short term. Uh, tell me, you started this conversation by asking us about the transformation, the transformation of the Chinese economy. And I answered by saying transformation from a more traditional economy to a more digital and more new economy. In fact, the four sectors that you talk about would be part of the, the new digital economy that I talk about. Digital as broadly defined mm. or technologically innovative economy. So for those sectors, uh, in my view, there's going to be major drivers for the Chinese economy going forward. A lot of money has been put into place. A lot of companies are already participating in those sectors as well as we're seeing a lot of innovations that are coming out from uh, from these sectors. So I believe that going forward, these sectors is going to be the major engines for driving the Chinese technological innovation. But it's not only these four sectors, of course. We also have, let's say, the on the environmental side, the ESG side, uh, that's also the green tech is also a major development area, right? So what are the conditions that will enable these sectors to continue to grow and maybe even grow faster. You certainly, as Mr. Liu talked about, you need to have the right policy. You, you know, if you look at the new energy vehicles, electrical vehicles, the reason why it was able to take off, take off so rapidly within the last 10 years is because of the right policies with the right stimulus incentives and also enabling the entrepreneurs uh, to go into the sector and enable everybody to compete on the level playing field. Those kind of things. Those are important elements for success. And I think that if China continue to provide that kind of regulatory infrastructure, this, this industry will continue to grow and prosper and will continue to be the major drivers for the new uh, economy in China. Mm. I want to thank both of you for being very frank and also uh, insightful in this discussion. Thank you so much, Mr. Liu Zhichen and Mr. Edward Xie. Appreciate it.